T minus two minutes, T minus two minutes till the launch of the Hyperion shuttle aboard the Saturn C3X rocket. This is the second launch of the Hyperion shuttle aboard this rocket. The first launch was plagued by difficulties. It was the first launch of the Saturn C3X and the gimbling on the engines had issues causing oscillations and ultimately the second stage was not able to fulfill its role properly. However, this time all those issues are fixed and uh, so we have the second launch of the Hyperion shuttle with a very different mission with uh, two Kerbals on board, Guzman Kerman and Shelby Kerman, and we'll talk more about their mission as, uh, as it gets underway. But uh, for now, uh, this is a manned mission aboard the Hyperion shuttle. It will not, however, land manned. It will attempt a re-entry test without the Kerbals on board. The Kerbals will be transported to Titan Station, but more on that later as we approach uh, T minus one minute, T minus one minute here before the launch of the Hyperion shuttle. Uh, there have been severe software issues uh, prior to this with the Telemachus system and uh, and uh, hopefully those have been resolved at this point. Te Telemachus system reading high g-forces and other such issues. Uh, currently we are reading telemetry data okay and uh, control OK as we approach here now T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 as we see the interior view with uh, Guzming and Shelby. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one, and liftoff. We have liftoff of the Hyperion shuttle aboard the Saturn C3X rocket. And the tower is clear. The C3X sporting its uh, special payload fairing for the shuttle. Cosming reports the roll program and the roll program is in. Uh, we do not have telemetry data right now coming through the Telemachus system. That is uh, not a problem of course because uh, we can actually see the te uh, telemetry data from the in cockpit views uh, as you can see there. But, uh, but uh, still more trouble with that system right now. And the pitch program has started. We can see uh, the beginnings of the pitch program here. As the rocket uh, continues on, uh, T plus one minute, T plus one minute. There may be some sort of delay on the in cockpit feed as uh, we believe the rocket should be approaching the speed of sound here. But uh, the velocity uh, readout on the display seems to be a little bit behind. Uh, there we go, uh, the vehicle is supersonic and uh, continuing on. T plus 1 minute 40 seconds. Guzming looks uh, excited there. Trajectory is nominal. Engine performance nominal. T plus two minutes. Fifteen seconds left in the first stage. Mission control has them go for staging. First stage out. First stage separation. And the second stage is lit. All indications are that the second stage is good. Saturn C3X is proceeding on. It looks like the two Kerbals are uh, perfectly calm right now. They were of course selected for their poise and professionalism. 
awaiting fairing separation now, and we should be able to see it from this view. And there we have it, fairing separation. Fairings are clear. The four J2s are the second stage operating according to parameters. The second stage will burn for four minutes and eight seconds in total. At this point, it would be good to uh, discuss the mission of the Hyperion shuttle this time. The goal this time is to uh, launch the shuttle into a uh, translunar injection. So, uh, after it gets into Earth orbit, a relatively tight Earth orbit, it will then uh, transfer to the moon using the remaining fuel in the third stage and so there has to be enough left in the third stage to transfer the shuttle. The shuttle will still have its booster pack uh, which is uh, a single RL-10 engine with uh, its own little fuel and uh, that booster pack would normally be used to bring it into lunar orbit however since we do not have facilities available to refuel the shuttle in lunar orbit, uh, it will not be doing that. So that 800 meters per second of delta V in that booster pack will be reserved, and instead the shuttle will be passing by the moon and then return to Earth on a free return. Uh, though uh, uh, some adjustments will be made in lunar orbit to ensure the return uh, is proper, and uh, so it will return then to Earth and uh, do a combination of uh, aero braking, light aero braking as well as using its booster pack to slow down into Earth orbit. So it will uh, use the fuel up as well as do some aero braking and, uh, and then once in Earth orbit again, well technically it never left Earth orbit, but once uh, in closer Earth orbit it would then, it would then uh, rendezvous with Titan Station and then uh, Gus Ming and Shelby will depart the shuttle, uh, transferring to Titan Station, and then the shuttle, unmanned, will attempt a re-entry. So it is a rather complicated mission, and of course the EDB is uh, using this mission as, uh, as a way of showing that it is still progressing forward after the disaster on the moon with its uh, attempted Cathane Minor landing. That miner, of course, uh, failing on descent. So once again, aiming for the moon, this time with a manned mission, though of course not landing it. Success on this mission will of course give the EDB a significant boost. Failure on this mission is clearly not an option with two Kerbals on board. Everything is looking good so far. Uh, we are now waiting a second stage out here. As you can see, the the acceleration is uh, quite severe near the end of the second stage. Though nothing, nothing uh, beyond uh, two or three G's here. And that's second stage out. Second stage separation. And third stage is lit. The seven RL-10s are uh, now lit and the, the Saturn C-3X continues on its way with the Hyperion shuttle. Expected burn time for uh, this, this stage is approximately four minutes. And then it will burn again for four minutes and uh, roughly 20 seconds to perform the translunar injection. So total burn time for the stage, uh, eight minutes, 20 seconds. The Hyperion shuttle is outfitted to carry six Kerbals altogether. And in fact, it has enough uh, supplies for, for uh, that kind of a crew for over a hundred days. So in fact, uh, Guzming and Shelby have uh, 300 days worth of supplies and so are in no way short of uh, supplies. So uh, if for some reason they need to they need to uh, abort their initial mission and go into some other mission mode 
they can uh, remain in Earth orbit for a lengthy period of time and be rescued. The key is to uh, not, not risk their lives, of course. So if any of the plan maneuvers is deemed too risky, based on uh, whatever data comes in, uh, we will be able to keep them in orbit and then rescue them. The Hyperion shuttle itself also has uh, quite a bit of RCS fuel in the form of MH and N204. It, uh, it initially was filled with hydrazine and uh, RCS ports the RCS ports configured for hydrazine. However, the Titan station as well as the Paliac fuel depot around the moon uh, both contain MMH and N204, so it was uh, decided that it would be more useful to have the shuttle configured for MMH N204 instead of hydrazine, and so that change was made. It uh, made a negligible change in the mass of the shuttle, but perhaps changed its aerodynamics somewhat. Uh, even a small amount of difference on the shuttle's mass would have uh, changed the changed the balance somewhat. So we will have to see on this re-entry test uh, if we do get to that point uh, how that shapes up. Okay, roughly one more minute in this burn. Mission Control is still not getting data through Telemachus. We're not entirely sure what is wrong with that. There are numerous issues. The Telemachus system on board the Hyperion shuttle is in the cargo bay, and uh, it is uh, attached in such a way that it might be might be interfered with uh, with uh, antenna, or perhaps the RTG units that are currently in the cargo bay. Uh, providing uh, supplementary electricity on this uh, this mission. RTGs are not standard equipment for the Hyperion shuttle, but uh, in the interest of making sure the Kerbals are safe and well provided for, it was decided to to include them this time to make sure that they had electricity for however long they needed. And that's third stage out. And the orbit for Guzming and Shelby Kerman is 233 kilometers by 197 kilometers. And so that's a good orbit. Uh, we read that they have 3,171 meters per second remaining in the third stage, and that is more than is necessary for the 3,135 meters per second for uh, TLI. So they are go for translunar injection that will occur either on the first orbit or second orbit and so we're talking about either one hour or two and a half hours into the mission and so with that uh, thank you for watching this launch of the Hyperion shuttle board the Saturn C3X and we hope you will join us for the transfer to the moon welcome back to coverage of the Hyperion shuttle launch aboard the Saturn C3X rocket and uh, we are here covering the transfer to the moon translunar injection which will be a roughly 4 minute and 22 second burn and that will be conducted by the third stage of the Saturn C3X getting ready here and all these rockets are on and the third stage is lit relight of the third stage is successful and the Hyperion shuttle is beginning on its way to the moon The burn will be 3,135 meters per second in delta V, which is just short of the capacity for this this stage at this point. Of course, the the Hyperion shuttle plus its uh, little booster pack, which uh, gets it into orbit around the moon once it uh, reaches uh, lunar periapsis. Uh, the combined mass of that is 17 tons. And that 17 tons happens to be happens to be exactly the the lunar transfer capacity for the Saturn C3X. The Hyperion shuttle will not be put into a precisely free return trajectory. It is going to be on the characteristic figure eight pattern, but it's uh, 
Earth periapsis will be high after passing uh, the moon sphere influence. It will be uh, far too high to to be uh, aerobraked by the atmosphere, and so a correction will have to be made at uh, lunar periapsis. And the reason for this was to ensure that the Hyperion shuttle was placed on a traje trajectory close to the moon, so that the two crew members could do some surveying, some some uh, science and to take a closer look at the moon for future missions. So that decision was made uh, on balance to allow the Earth periapsis to be a little bit higher and uh, that will require the correction. And that correction will be uh, done using... will be done using RCS. Uh, it will not, be a, will not be a large correction at all. So far the burn looks good. About halfway into the burn now. There's been a lot of talk about the situation with the booster pack. Right now it's an RL10 engine with uh, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen and it uh, develops uh, 800 meters per second just enough to get into lunar orbit once you've reached lunar periapsis but that is not ideal. It would be preferable to have a situation where where it could develop 1800 meters per second and thereby uh, that would be the minimum to get into lunar orbit and then proceed to transfer out of lunar orbit back to back to Earth. And so that would be the ideal situation. However, uh, we currently do not have any engines capable of that. Uh, not if the launcher is the Saturn C3X, which of course uh, this is already at its capacity. The RL-10 is already a very, very efficient engine in vacuum, and so that is the constraint. But the EDB is looking into uh, what can be done about that. The big hurdle, of course, is that there is no facility to uh, refuel liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. If, on the other hand, uh, cathane mining can be started up on the moon and uh, that turns out to be successful, then then we would have an ability to refuel the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen by breaking it down to cathane and converting it. And so that would give us a uh, possibility to refuel this booster pack, in which case it would at least have to be extended to about 1,100 meters per second for the transfer back to Earth. About uh, 30 seconds left in this burn. Unfortunately, uh, Kerbal chemists have uh, discovered that cathane cannot be converted into either MMH or N204. So uh, that will be a stumbling block since that is those are the fuels uh, most often used in orbit by orbital systems in the EDB. And that is the third stage out for the second time now. And while a small correction might need to be made, the Hyperion shuttle is on its way to the moon now. It is on a lunar trajectory. It has a lunar encounter in two days and 20 hours. And its uh, lunar periapsis will be in three days 14 hours. Uh, we are now waiting for the separation of the third stage from the Hyperion shuttle and its uh, small booster pack. Back out to the simulated view here. And there it is, uh, third stage separation is good. And the shuttle may proceed on with its mission. It uh, has been calculated, I needed a uh, 
one meter per second correction in order to get its trajectory correct. And it handled that correction using RCS while while over Mexico. So thank you for watching this uh, this coverage of the Hyperion Shuttle's launch towards the moon. We hope you enjoyed this coverage and will join us for the rest of the Hyperion Shuttle mission. And with that, this is the EDB signing off.